Dave McMenamin has been covering uh, ESPN's uh, the uh, NBA beat since 2005. He's a senior NBA reporter for ESPN since 2014. He's a favorite of the show, and he's back here. How are you, Dave? I'm great. I'm not having as much fun as you guys are. Well, your, Syrac- the- your Syracuse <laughs> buddy Brockman is is uh, is uh, he's tight right We're now. We're locked in, Dave. Let's go, buddy. He's locked in on Argentina. I, I love it. Let's go, Messi. All right, so um, let's get to it. What what can you tell us about the uh, communication between the Cavs and LeBron so far, Dave? It hasn't occurred. Uh, LeBron's on vacation with his family right now. There's been no communication with LeBron or LeBron's people and the Cavs since the Cavs season ended uh, last Friday, you know, just about a week ago. And um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's, that's not a surprise. That's not like a change in, in the wind in terms of where LeBron's going to go. Uh, I wouldn't read that as a negative development, but this is the way LeBron James has just decided to conduct his business. He is basically sending a message as I'm interpreting it to the Cavs that Hey, you have a chance to get me, of course, but you got to go take care of business, make the franchise look as attractive as possible as you can. Then when it's time, I'm going to reach out to you and you're going to show, show me why I should come back to the Cavs to play for you in 2018, 2019 and beyond. So what can they, can tonight actually be part of that puzzle, Dave, an eighth overall yeah. selection? I mean, okay, one, normally the number eight pick in, in a draft isn't a franchise changer. And I'm not even saying this year's draft is that much more deep than a normal year where eight carries more value. The Cavs, though, they like what they can get at number eight. They believe that there's a handful of guys that will be available they can choose from that will satisfy something that was missing from the Cavs roster during this last playoff run was – you know, in terms of either a guy with playmaking ability or playmaking ability uh, and defensive switchability uh, or defensive toughness and some shooting ability, like some combination of those skills that the entire Cavs collection of talent lacked as they made their way to the fourth straight NBA Finals, they think they can get. And when you're a luxury tax strapped team like the Cavs have been, because Dan Gilbert has spent more than any other owner in the last four years to try to keep the roster together for LeBron James, uh, sometimes you actually have to get a young talent. That's the most important thing to do, not trade the pick. That doesn't mean they're not going to listen to offers tonight if one comes down the pike, but they're going into the draft intending to draft a guy that they can bring on their team next season. Well, what about making a big splash tonight moving up? Wouldn't that be something that would uh, cut through the vacation time for LeBron to hear? That's the interesting thing to me is that, you know, and I, I can only go by the other reporters that we have here. And, you know, Jonathan McDermott does a great job for ESPN. And, you know, he's reporting seven teams are in play for the Memphis pick at number four. Uh, in none of those seven teams are the Cavs. <laughs> and so it, it makes me wonder, okay, are, are the Cavs not that enamored by someone such, you know, someone who could be there for someone like a Mo Bamba or Wendell Carter, et cetera, et cetera that they don't think that player would be that much better than the guy they think they could get at eight. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., Trey Young, um, uh, Colin Sexton, Shea Alexander out of Kentucky, et cetera. Um, now, uh, maybe they are one of the eight teams, or maybe they're waiting to the last minute to wow Memphis with an offer, or maybe they want to go even higher. But um, to me, that means that they are they either one of two things. Either they aren't totally enamored by any one guy, or the guy that they really like, they they are pretty sure will be available for them at eight. Well, what about the idea of shooting their shot with the Spurs for Kawhi and how that might play into tonight uh, or what the team can do with Kevin Love? Because he's their, I would agree, I assume you would agree, their most attractive piece that they would have to throw out there. Right, Dave? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I reported yesterday that, that heading into the draft, the Cavs are not actively shopping Kevin Love, and, and they would have interest in bringing Kevin back to the roster next year, regardless of whatever decision LeBron makes about his future. Now, part of that is they did call the Spurs, and they dangled what they had in their cupboards, was basically Kevin Love and the number eight pick as the two most valuable, valuable pieces. And they got the impression that's not anywhere close to what they need to acquire Kawhi. 
And, and if you think about it, like you, you go, oh man, well, you know, it wasn't like the package for Kyrie Irving was that much better. The package for Paul George was that much better. Um, but the difference is Kyrie Irving, Paul George, uh, 10 to 15 players in the league. Like that's where they rank in the range, you know, number 10 to 15 in, in that range. Kawhi Leonard's one to five. And uh, the Spurs are, are, are giving out the vibe that they want a, a much more robust package to part ways with Kawhi. And, and the Cavs recognize that, you know, we don't have those assets. Um, so we're not going to be a player for Kawhi. And with that, then we're, we are looking at it as like we're not going to keep shopping Kevin just to shop him. Uh, we would shop for Kawhi. But if we're not, it's not Kawhi, we're going to hold on to the guy. Dave McManaman here on the Rich Eisen Show. So then what could possibly be Cleveland's game plan to tell LeBron to stay? I mean, because if they don't have the pieces to go get Kawhi to bring him, then you figure they don't have the pieces to bring anybody else that might create the super team there. They're capped out. I mean, they're going to be luxury taxed regardless of whether LeBron returns, Dave. I mean – whoever they choose number eight overall uh, that that that's going to be the most attractive new piece for them to well, say to LeBron to stay. I mean, is that uh, it, walk me through it, this? It could, you know, I mean, so there's a couple things here. One, I think part of the appeal to stay is LeBron. We've changed our roster every year. Uh, you know, the first year was Timothy Moskov and Iman Shumpert and J.R. Smith. And then it was Channing Fry, And then it was Kyle Korver. And then, obviously, all the trades that occurred this year in February, completely changing the team. Um, we are going to continue to be aggressive and do that. And we're going to take on extra money at the trade deadline if we have to do that. Um, but because of our luxury tax situation, which you're well aware of, and LeBron's smart enough to understand that, that you know, this summer we may not get the piece right away. Um, and, and we'd like you to have some patience with us and look at our track record of doing that. Hopefully the young pieces um, develop and, you know, there's an avenue that, you know, well, they also have a couple trade exceptions that they could use. And then beyond that, there's an avenue that has been discussed much, but based on Dan's spending habits, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that, you know, they would pursue a buyout of one of the, the bad contracts they have that would free up them in the future a little bit more. Um, now, is that a perfect solution? Absolutely not. And that's why I think, the, the, the one team that the, the Cavs probably have to worry about the most would be the Lakers because the Lakers right now have the maneuverability uh, and the young assets to basically turn that team into a blank canvas. And it can look completely different uh, the first week of July than it does right now when it comes to LeBron uh, to make his decision. Uh, but outside of that, the Cavs, basically all they can go on is, is track record, hmm. patience, and the obviously the, the tie to the Northeast Ohio community, having played for the Cavs 11 out of 15 seasons in the league, and, and probably also the narrative card they can play that, hey, LeBron, you stay with the Cavs, it's only positive for you. No one criticizes you if you end up uh, with the Cavs for the rest of your career. You go somewhere else, really anywhere else, if you don't win, your legacy can take a hit. Mm. And do you really want that? 16 years into the league, 34 years old, uh, to, to take that risk and that burden. I don't know, Dave. I, I mean, would he really take a hit with him saying, you know, I, 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 I love Kevin Love. It was great playing with him there. We won one for the land. You know, Tristan Thompson's a warrior. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this is the sort of thing he would say publicly, but, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the guy I'm depending on didn't know what the freaking score was. I mean, seriously, <laughs> right? I, I, so, well, there's, there's there's an out there, but so, there's, I think he would never be accepted when, by the Lakers if he didn't win a championship. I mean, we agree on that. They just wouldn't. I mean, look, Kobe Bryant already has his, his head on a target, seemingly trying to you know plant plant uh, seeds about. Well, you know, you understand if you come to Lakers, it's all about championships. Uh, Houston Rockets. The perception is that they're so close to the Warriors. In my opinion, they're really not. I think the Warriors were going through uh, their own kind of stuff during the playoffs and, and did not play nearly as well as they're capable of against the Rockets, and then they figured it out against the Cavs. And then, you know, Philly, you go to play with a bunch of young players, um, you know, and who's to say they're ready to perform? You know, those guys have won one playoff series combined. 
Um, who's to say they're ready to perform when LeBron is still in the prime of his prime. Um, so I don't think there's a, a perfect solution out there in all of them. You would have the idea of, well, he's going there to try to win a ring. And if he doesn't win a ring, he failed there hmm. with the Cavs. That doesn't exist. So last one for you, Dave, do we know what, when do we know when the order's up? Is LeBron going to give the Cavs the first shot? Uh, when, when do we know when that, that actually begins to be uh, hammered out? It's a, it's a good question. I, I mean, again, as I mentioned, he's on vacation with the family. I don't know for sure when that'll occur. June 29th is the date to look at right now. It's about eight days from now. LeBron has to either pick up his option for next season by then or opt out and officially become a free agent, at which point I imagine that would be kind of the start of the clock. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if, if the Cavs and uh, LeBron's camp open up communication that day because obviously – the Cavs, I mean, LeBron's going to have to inform that decision. Uh, and from there, it would be, okay, uh, what are we doing from here? And, and let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it out. Enjoy the draft, Dave. We'll chat next week and throughout this whole Thanks, process. Chris. Really appreciate it. That's uh, Dave McMenamin at MCTEN at, at Mc10. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.